Canelo versus Bivol, a fight we've seen before. Now, the the idea that we fight how we train is very, very, very important. And the idea that we understand that Canelo Alvarez being in the same camp as Oscar Valdez means that they're going to be doing a lot of things very similarly because they're learning to do them all from the same person. Okay, this is very important. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at Canelo Alvarez's jab here. Now, when he gets his weight to the front foot, okay, he's going to be kind of rocking back and forth a little bit, okay, as he goes back, forward, back, forward. And when he gets his weight to the front foot, he's going to look to step hard and continue driving his weight forward. But notice how his weight stays on the front foot. And then he kind of walks off the line, gets again to the front foot. It's not very fast. It's not very sharp. Uh, there's power in it, right? I have the same heavy bag, by the way. Um, uh, but it's not super fast, okay? And the technique is very interesting because it's the same exact technique that Oscar Valdez uses when he throws his jab. As we can see, he uses that in the Robson Kinsechow fight. Now, this is going to be our template for uh, have we seen this fight already? Okay, um, Bivol versus Canelo is going to play out very, very similarly to the way that um, Valdez versus uh, Robson Kinsechow did, except that Canelo's a little bit better than uh, Oscar Valdez, and Bivol is way better than Robson Kinsechow. And it's going to be really interesting because, as we can see this timing of his jab here, it's not difficult to, ca to capture, okay? We're going to take a look at a couple of different clips with uh, Mr. Valdez here. Here he is again, getting timed here by uh, uh, Robson, and then almost getting countered with an additional punch after. Okay, But watch the technique, how he gets his weight to the front foot. He keeps his head there when he lets the punch go. Uh, almost decent defense when he's leaving. Um, we got another clip here, jumping in with the jab. And he's going to get kind of pull countered and hit with the two here. This is all very, very, very important because Dimitri Bivol is very fast. And this is his his style of boxing is getting on and off the line. Okay? And that's the the same exact style that Robson Kinsechow used. It's the same style as we see here. Now I want you guys to pay attention, a special attention to this part. As Valdez gets his weight to the front foot, the uppercut comes, right? This is exactly what Stevenson was doing to Valdez. And then now he's going to leave this position. He's going to try to make it to the front foot again. And he's going to get timed by the jab. And he has to leave the line. Okay? That's exactly what Stevenson was doing to him. And now he's going to shoot the jab when he gets to that position and get countered. And I want you to pay attention to his position. This is exactly what would have happened to him if he continued to use his jab against Stevenson as well. Um, Stevenson was much sharper than Robson. Uh, his timing was better. And the jab was just as flawed. Here he is on the fr in the first round, stepping forward with that jab, head on the front foot, and he's already getting smacked by a hook-like motion from Stevenson. Okay? Now, it's not really a punch, but it's enough to get him off balance and to let uh, Valdez know that he's going to be in danger for that shot over the top. As Valdez is all, or Stevenson is already getting the timing or getting a feel for what that position is going to look like, 19 seconds into the round, when he starts stepping forward with that same jab that Canelo was practicing. Now, again, it's the same technique. They practice it the same way. Why would we expect Canelo to have any better of a jab against Bivol than Oscar Valdez had against the, uh, Shakur Stevenson? We're going to take a look at another clip of him trying to come forward with the jab again, getting here. And again, telegraphing it, right? He's got to make it to the front foot. He's got to bring his weight forward. And again, someone who's a boxer like Bivol, who's always in pendulum, always in motion, always going one, two, one with the pendulum, the, the rhythm, the timing. Um, uh, it's hard to sneak up on them. And uh, we're going to take a look at Caleb Plant versus uh, Canelo, some highlights. I actually can't find the, the full fight, so I can chop it myself. So we're going to get to see what other people interpreted as the highlights, and I'll kind of break them down and kind of talk about how those similarities um, are going to be present in the Canelo fight, especially off of the, off of the jab. 
Um, let's see if there's any other clips I want to take a look at at first. Again, this is probably his best one, and he's still getting creamed on the way in. So we're going to go ahead and take a look now at Canelo versus Plant. And we're just going to be going over a bunch of random highlights. Um, so number one, what's happening here? Okay, Canelo's trying to make it to the front foot. 30 seconds in, and he's getting controlled by the boxing motion on and off the line of Caleb Plant. We know that Caleb Plant is not as good as Bivol. He doesn't hit as hard. He's not as fast. Oh, oh, real quick, and I want to connect the dot real quick. You guys know that drill game that, that Bivol's always playing? One, two, one. He jumps onto the line with the one. He throws the two, and then he jumps off the line with the one. Canelo's going to do that in this sequence here, too. And I want you guys to just be very mindful of the difference in speed, okay? Okay, any second, Canelo. Very, very slow jabs here. There it was. You see it at the end there? I'll go back to that. I think he does another one here. Somewhere closer. No, all jabs. Okay. One. And he's going to jump onto the line. One, two, one. That's the same drill that Bivol does. I just want you guys to be mindful of just the massive amount of speed difference in their feet. It's just going to be absolutely incredible. Okay? Now, to demonstrate that again, we're going to watch a little bit of these highlights of Plant versus uh, Canelo. Uh, Canelo easily being controlled by the jab by Plant there. Canelo, uh, Caleb Plant easily getting on the line with the jab there, on and off here with multiple jabs. And Canelo finding a very difficult time getting on the line with his opponent here. Again, the shorter fighter, decent pendulums there from Canelo getting controlled. Now, this is not a position that Bivol is going to be finding himself in because Bivol can actually throw a right hand after his jab, uh, unlike uh, Caleb Plant. Now, Canelo making it to the front foot, and look at him explode out of his guard with this left hook here. Do we really believe that Dimitri Bivol is not going to be able to catch that timing? That he's not going to be able to disrupt his ability to enter the line here? I 100% I believe that Bibble is going to be able to time and intercept Canelo on these giant openings, especially because of where he leaves his head at the end of it. Okay? Um, and again, we're going to take a look at some more um, highlights. But notice all the work. He starts getting some work done once he gets on the inside, gets a hold of his guy, um, but not still not knocking him out, even though he's hitting him kind of clean. Boxing on the outside. Doesn't that kind of look like Robson Canseichow versus Oscar Valdez? Again, Canelo's jab, people think that it's so great. Here he is in the front foot. We know he's going to throw a left hand here, and his head's stuck on the line in the same position that he throws his jab from. Okay, that's very important because here it is, uh, Demi uh, Caleb Plant countering him already. Okay, and again, I don't think Bivol is going to have nearly as difficult of a time countering Canelo uh, with hard shots to push him off his line. Again, it's not very difficult to push him off his line with the jab. Um, as, again, Canelo has a hard time making it to the front foot. Again, big leaping left hook, and look at his head, stuck on the front foot. Again, a pattern of this type of training, because he keeps his head in one position. He's not practicing all three facets of boxing. Getting on the line, making your attack, and then getting off the line safely. He's just not doing it. Uh, so he finishes his striking, and he leaves his head in the same spot. And this is him practicing his boxing. I have absolutely never seen Canelo practice his boxing anywhere else. And again, we saw how poor the boxing was for, for Oscar Valdez versus Shakur Stevenson. And we saw how, how poor it was against Robson Canseichow. Now, here he is getting timed as he comes in against Caleb Plant off that big leaping shot here. Again, I think Bivol's going to be able to do a much better job catching him over the top as well. Um... <clears throat> but uh, I do think, again, Canelo has a very difficult time getting on the line with boxing-type fighters. Um, and again, these are highlights. This is not showing all the time that Canelo gets forced to interact on the outside. And here's the first time that Caleb Plant really makes uh, Canelo pay for that shot when he sits on the line after throwing that left hand. And again, this is a very similar position that he winds up in when he throws his jab and getting countered here by the right hand by Plant. And again... Um, Getting timed on the front foot, not making it into position, getting controlled, pushed off his line, getting controlled again. Here's that left hook. His head's in the same position. Oh, I thought Plant was going to counter him again. <laughs> Here's Canelo with that jab right there. 
Is Bivol going to allow him to throw that jab? Double jab, triple jab, sitting on the front foot here, his head always in the same spot? Again, in spite of the fact that Canelo is a little bit better about making it around the front foot, many of these engagements look very similar to the Robson Kinsechow fight. And uh, again, I think that Dimitri Bivol is a better version of, of Kinsechow. And uh, I think that, well, obviously Canelo is a bit better version of Valdez. But this type of stuff is going to be much less prevalent in the fight with uh, Bivol. Is, Bivol is a much better boxer. He has much better circling. Um, there are times where he'll sit on the line with somebody um, and let them throw body shots for some reason. I have no idea why he sometimes lets somebody just throw a hard body shot at him. Um, but that may be one of those things that's effective for Canelo, like this, um, as Bivol's not as good at blocking them. But um, moments like this are where Canelo's going to have to really stress and try to hurt Bivol, but I don't think Canelo has power at this weight. Um, I know that he got credit for knocking out uh, Caleb Plant, um, but uh, I don't think that you know Caleb Plant particularly has a great chin necessarily. Um, his his neck is about as you know limp as his wrist. Now, again, controlling the space with that lead hand, not right there, here. Um, and Canelo getting pretty wide when he comes in. Again, I think that a boxer like Bivol is going to be able to mitigate a lot of the opportunities that Canelo has to explode uh, into these shots because he'll be able to follow them up better. Um, Caleb Plant sometimes has some qu quick hands um, and can get to the front foot pretty quick, but he doesn't have any power. Uh, and he was still able to give Canelo a lot of trouble in this fight. Uh, even though some of these highlights don't don't really show it at the moment. Again, his head sitting in a very similar place for many, many, many beats of the line. Uh, but still, getting picked off on the outside here. Control, jab, caught with the shot here, caught with the shot here on the inside. Um, all to land that one shot, right? Gets on the inside. And again, moments like these I think will be much less... Um, much less common against Bivol than they were against uh, Plant because Plant still believes in the magic of the shoulder roll. Uh, again, getting stuck here, the left hook catching Plant. Uh, again, Canelo not really changing position, so he can still land a decent shot here uh, and get some decent power, but it's like, you know, largely an arm punch. But it makes it quick, right? And Plant doesn't realize he's already out of position. He's not in a position to to really get away from that shot. Canelo's too close for you to safely be able to say, oh, I can defend that punch from that position. But his head gets stuck on the line and, and Plant's able to catch him again. Again, Canelo has to put so much momentum, so much of his, so much effort into his punches, uh, he winds up being out of position when they're done because he doesn't practice his boxing. Um, and again, the stuff on the outside like this where Canelo has to use his jab um, and again, that's what we really want to see is the jab on the outside. I want you to pay attention. Round four, we've only seen like three jabs, right, from Canelo. Most of it's been the hooks, been that stuff, right? There's his jab right there. Was it a good jab? No, nah, not really. Getting caught in the same position. I don't think he paid for that one. Easily out jabbed and controlled on the outside. How much better will Bivol do there? Um, decent body shot. He landed a body shot here on the inside. Good shot. And then he lands one on the inside here. Boom. Good body shot. Uh, but is he going to be eating a one, a two? Okay, so maybe he's reading uh, Plant's... Plant had tried this move where he tries to spin. Uh, he had tried that a few times. He tried it in the first opening clip, actually, if you guys remember this video. Um, and uh, again, that's not a real boxing move. Canelo finally making him pay for it. Um, so good work from Canelo by taking that away. It's just too many beats. But, um, again, this fight, uh, if you guys remember, and again, when we start to get to see a little bit more of the boxing stuff and not just Canelo walking in, is Canelo going to be able to walk in against Bivol? Is that going to work against him? Um, now, the other interesting thing that I want to point out, okay, because we haven't just seen this fight in terms of um, tactics, right? In terms of 
uh, the way that the fight's going to play out, right? Because this fight is going to play out very similar to the Robson Conceitchow fight, because again, Canelo can't really get his weight in, uh, inside any other way, except for with the jab or with counters like this, okay? Now again, Canelo doesn't get his head off the line, and he's not a big puncher. Again, I think he's going to have a very difficult time against someone like Bivol, uh, who can follow up and get on the line. Again, is that a position you want to be in if you're Canelo? If he got hit with the right hand here, this is night-night. He's going to get knocked out. Okay, I don't think that uh, Plant, obviously, is going to be able to land a shot like that. But uh, Bivol might. And Canelo finds himself in poor punches, poor position uh, to defend punches quite often. Now, um, let's see if there's any other clips of the jab. Because, again, this, uh, the, the scorecards were pretty close in this fight. Uh, when Caleb Plant finally got knocked out. Um, and I want you guys to think about that because, again, Bivol's a much better boxer, much more active on his feet. He doesn't get tired like Plant because he's not holding his breath the whole time and going, it's, 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 and whatever he does when he says shit. Um, but um, the scorecards. The scorecards are another part of this fight that we've very likely seen already before. Um, Canelo's going to get a lot of credit for power in, in landing punches, but he's not really a power puncher at this weight. Um, he's going to have to work pretty hard to set up punches and land punches. Um, and uh, if Bivol is not super active, what's going to wind up happening is the same thing that happened uh, to Amanda Serrano, where they're going to say, oh, you just got to take it from the champion. They're the champion. You got to take it from the champion or whatever um, and tell you you didn't work hard enough. Right now, Amanda Serrano, I thought, absolutely beat the dog shit out of Katie Taylor, and that was a travesty for the sport. Eddie Hearn, you're despicable, absolutely despicable. Um, he did the same shit with with uh, uh, Josh Taylor, right? And you know what the sad thing is? The guy that beat Josh Taylor, bro, that was the performance of your life. You waited your whole life to do that. And I don't even remember your name. Like, how sad is that? That guy's going to miss out on all this money, on all this fame that he worked so hard to get into position to get uh, because Eddie Hearn's a scumbag. Now, uh, that's exactly what happened to Amanda Serrano, right? The, the, the Josh Taylor curse or whatever. You know how the scorecards are rigged against you? Um... Regis Progre beat Josh Taylor, but Josh Taylor's a commodity. Uh, that other guy beat Josh Taylor, but Josh Taylor's a commodity. Now they're going to try to feed him to Tiafimo Lopez. They're actually going to hope that Tiafimo Lopez sucks um, and that, uh, can, that he can be a bigger Cambosis, but I don't know about that. But um, uh, Amanda Serrano, you, you kicked her ass. And I just want to rant a little bit about Miranda Serrano, just a little bit. I know that kind of makes my video a little weak or whatever, you know, because it's getting off the rails. But you fucking, you have the audacity to fucking beg for three-minute rounds? What the fuck did you do with the two minutes they gave you? What the fuck? You were beating her ass for all these rounds. And you're like, well, if I had three minutes, I would have knocked her out in rounds two, three, four, or five. So fuck it. I just don't even got to try six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Is that what you thought? And you just gave all those two-minute rounds? They weren't your style? They weren't the three-minute round that you wanted? So you're just not going to do anything with them? Man. So disappointing. She gave you an opportunity and all you took was the money. And then at the end of the fight, you got all this energy to kiss her ass and tell her, Oh, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, I guess we can do it in Ireland. Oh, you were supposed to be Amanda Nunez. Beating up Ronda Rousey, becoming the next face of... But no, you let, you let Ronda Rousey wiggle butt you to death. Like... Oh, man. And the, those judges? And now, here we get to the, the big part of it, okay? And the big problem in boxing. And this is the part that everyone in the sport of boxing that is a fan of boxing, that is a fighter in boxing... Everyone that is not a promoter needs to get behind. We cannot have closed scoring anymore. 
It is destroying the sport. The fact that Eddie Hearn can have the judges paid off or whatever is going on or, or Canelo's judges are paid off in this fight or that fight and they can hide it until the end of the fight and all anyone gets to do is go, oh, well, I guess in this round I should have tried harder. Why is it that in basketball, if you make some points, you know right away. In football, if you score a touchdown, they don't wait till the end of the fight or the end of the match to let you know, oh, yeah, you guys had 49 points the whole time. We don't even know why you guys were trying so hard. They didn't even score one time. What the fuck? What an insane sport. You hit a home run? Hey, we'll tell you later if that counted, bro. Yeah, it's just against the numbers. How differently would that fight go if Amanda Serrano knows, oh, I didn't really get credit for kicking her ass because Eddie Hearn needs to make more money? Because this guy, this scumbag who's never laced up a glove in his life, who doesn't know shit about boxing, needs another yacht? Oh, yeah, this guy schmoozing with Jake Paul. No offense, Jake Paul, like no offense to you. Great job breaking into the sport of boxing. It's not easy, apparently. But, anyway. Bivol's going to get robbed, just like Robson Kinsechow was. Um, and everyone in the sport of boxing is going to continue to be robbed of the best fights possible until we have open scoring. Until at the end of every round, they stop replacing the, the, the round timer with bullshit, with like fake highlights or, or us having to listen to those dumb announcers. We don't even need them. Like, I mean, yeah, it's nice to have somebody talking, but give us the score in between rounds. Give us something to cheer for. Give us something. The idea that they're allowed to hide, that they're going to rob the, someone of the fight until the, until the 12th round and everyone's just going to be like, oh, well, a Katie Taylor fan is not going to want to look like a dipshit because Amanda Serrano beat her ass. So yeah, they're not going to say, oh yeah, well, Amanda Serrano won that. I got to admit. How rare is that? But if you have open scoring, how much more likely is Golovkin to really try to belt Canelo in that 12th round? How much better of a fight does that be? Huh? If he knows he's losing. But no, we wait until after the moment has passed to steal the moments these people have worked their whole lives for. And what makes how hard Oscar Valdez has worked so much more important than how hard Robinson Kinsechow worked. What makes how hard Canelo worked in this camp so much more important than how hard Bibbo has worked his whole life? It's just kind of disgusting. So anyway, open scoring. Open scoring. I think that, especially if you go to somebody's hometown. Now, who's that going to favor? When, uh, when the next golden boy has a fight in, down under against Cambosis, right? Devin Haney. Open scoring, right? Maybe Devin Haney wants open scoring so that uh, he doesn't get robbed blindly. And here's the thing, maybe, maybe Cambosis is enough of a fucking man to say, yeah, I'll let you know if you're being robbed in my hometown, right? Or, you know, maybe he's like, fuck that, I need all the advantages I can get now that I got these belts, nobody was going to give me a shot before, now that I got them, right? Or maybe he's not a pussy, I don't know. But, uh, um... But open scoring, it needs to happen. It has to happen. Uh, we can't allow the promoters. Here's the thing. If the best fighters wind up fighting the best fighters, boxing becomes better because only the best fighters are allowed to be on top. 
I know that sounds like so stupid and simple and easy, but how much better of a fight would have Robson Kinsechow have given Oscar Valdez or have given Shakur Stevenson than Oscar Valdez? Why did we have to watch that fight if we'd already gotten to see he was going to lose? We already knew he was going to lose. Um, anyway, um, I do think that we've already seen most of the sequences and the patterns and the way that they're going to present themselves. Um, and I think they're present in the Robson Kinsechow fight with Oscar Valdez. I think that Canelo Alvarez is in big trouble. I think Canelo Alvarez is in big trouble. And as long as everybody doesn't do that thing where they only remember that he won the fight and they actually remember what happened, um, they'll realize that Canelo may be not that great. Okay? And, uh, um, no, maybe he knocks Bivol out. Who knows? Right? But, um, I think that Bivol needs to push for some open scoring for a, a fair shot at winning this uh, a, a fair shot at winning this fight and not getting robbed blindly. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that actually Amanda Serrano should uh, should file an appeal. <laughs> um, should file an appeal and get that fight overturned because uh, I think she kicked her ass. That was just insane. Um, Anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, if you guys want to see the full Shakur Stevenson versus Oscar Valdez fight uh, and film study, it's on Patreon, uh, along with a bunch of Errol Spence versus Terrence Crawford film studies. I've been doing them all week. We watched Benavidez. Uh, we watched uh, Mikey Garcia. Um, anyway, we're going to be watching a bunch more. We're going to be watching Tyson Fury too. I just got a copy of that. Um, yeah, anyway, later guys.